Canice, 310, Spring 21. This is Dr. Campbell. We are in the end game now. And this is a video that I'm making to help. Okay. I'm here to help. So where to begin? Let's start with this, okay? It's a screenshot. If you see on the bottom of the lecture a date that's not current, that means it's a past lecture. So if you see September 22nd, 2020, that means this was filmed in the month of September. Uh, the date is the 22nd day of the year 2020. So the material doesn't change year to year. That's what I love about physics and mechanics and human motion. Flexion extension, flexion extension is going to be the same last year and next year. So the information is the same. The instructions that I might have given that class, hey, do this, do that, doesn't matter. Because that tells me that was last year's lecture. I told you guys after talking to our administration, the grades were really good last year. So we thought we'd keep it consistent. But I don't use the same tests. I could use the same lectures, but I don't use the same tests. Another thing that after discussing, wait, let me finish with the lesson here. This is a video that I did. There we go. You see that date right there? March 4th, 2021. So if you see this date and it's now, that means I did the video now. Okay. Now, talking again, getting some advice and, and talking to some other colleagues, I want to explain the trade-off of online learning and teaching. I am not an online teacher. But my lectures being online presents a very interesting dynamic. Pros and cons, okay? The pros, students have access to all of my material where previous semesters didn't. Uh, previous semesters face-to-face -face classes, you had to be in class on time. If you, were, if you came to my class at 7.30.01, you were not coming into class. I had a very strict start on time policy. So in addition, on test days, there was no open book. You had to come to class knowing, understanding the concepts so that you could apply those concepts for the test. This is where I think the disconnect is. This is where I think the disconnect. This is where I think the trade-off comes from. Because all the lectures are online, I can watch it when I want. Sleep in, I'll watch it tomorrow, that kind of stuff. I've been there too, guys. I'm, I'm not blaming you. I'm trying to make sense of all this stuff. And the fact that for test day, because I can't police it, I'm like, look, it's open book because I can't police it. I can't check to see if you're not looking in your book or not or your notes or Googling. So what I think that does is it lessens the sense of urgency to learn this stuff at a level that I think you need to know. Because on the test, it's about figuring out concepts that you should know. It's about being able to play with the pieces that you should already know, not looking up the pieces. Like, I guess my point is, is that to think of an analogy, if I have a Lego set and I teach you how to put together that Lego set, and then on the test, I dump out the Legos and I say, go. By learning how to put it together, learning what the pieces are, learning what the round pieces, the square pieces, all the different pieces, you could take that set and put it together. But if you don't prep to know it beforehand, when I dump the pieces out and you say, oh, great, I have the instructions over here. Let me go look at it. You're going to run out of time. 
my previous face-to-face -face classes didn't have the instructions. I taught them in the instructions in the videos. Okay? So again, if you see a current date on the video, it's a current video. If you see a old date on the video, that's an old video. Someone said, well, I didn't know that this was a current video. You were asking us to do something. Old video? Current video. Okay. Now, let's go to the task at hand. In one of the old videos, and this is actually a positive thing, if you watch the trunk because of pelvic girdle because of trunk video and stuff was like, ah, that doesn't kind of fit well. That's a good sign. That means your intuition is like, ah, that doesn't fit what I think it should. That's like uh, a left-handed pitcher throwing a pitch and a right, a person who's used to catching for a right-hander is anticipating the ball to go this way and the ball goes that way. And they're like, whoa, I wasn't anticipating that. So that's a good lesson here. What was happening, it's really cool. That camera is you looking at this screen. For us to ensure that we're looking at the same thing, I need to also be looking at this screen. That way, both of our lives are looking at the same thing. What happened is, is that I had my phone, which would be like the screen, right? Take it off magically. But I was looking at the screen, looking at the phone. So you and I were looking at two different things. Now you and I are going to be looking at the same thing to make sure we're all on the same page. So again, this is a positive. When you were listening to that, you're like, oh, that doesn't fit right. And there's a reason. Because we're both looking at mirror images of each other. Now we won't be. So, what's her trunk position? She is right laterally bent. What did her pelvic girdle do to get to that position? Left lateral pelvic girdle rotation. Pelvis rotated to the left in the frontal plane. Left lateral. Her trunk had to recurve right lateral trunk. Now remember, I taught you, and I'm going to reemphasize it here, the trunk has to move because of, I mean, the pelvis, something has to move the pelvis. If I'm going to spin the basketball, something has to move the basketball. And it could be hip or hips or trunk. So the hips didn't have anything to do with this pelvic girdle rotation. She could move those hips independently. Does sometimes the hips move with the pelvis? Yeah. Yeah. But the same reason why sometimes my trunk moves with the pelvis when my feet are on the ground. The point is, is that she could move those hips independently and the pelvis isn't going anywhere until the hand that's palming the ball makes it move around. Trunk, upper body fixed. Pelvic girdle rotation is going to be because of trunk motion. If she has left lateral pelvic girdle rotation, it's because of the left lateral trunk bending. All right, let's both see the same thing on this one, shall we? Trunk is in anatomical. Boom. Remember on the video, I said, let's not worry about pelvic girdle rotation here because there's a ton of translation happening. But we can look at trunk. How did the trunk bend? From top to bottom, right lateral trunk bending. So to go bottom to top, left lateral. To put verbiage from our first test, right lateral trunk bending from anatomical, left lateral trunk bending to anatomical. Yeah. Let's do this one, shall we? I'll tell you what, I'll give you a second to pause the video so that way you can try to figure it out on your own and then unpause it when you're ready for the answer. Left lateral from anatomical, right lateral to anatomical. Cool. 
So again, for those of you that were kind of confused, now things should be really solidifying. Like, ah, oh, I got it. Cap and bottle, right? All right. They actually have this exercise in, or one very similar, where the upper extremity is fixed and the pelvis moves. They actually have this in, um, in the weight room here at Bourgeois. So if you wanted to literally go in there and test it out so that you could kind of feel it, knock yourself out. Again, this is not, I remember one semester, someone got really confused and they said, well, why isn't this hips? And I said, well, you got to think about it. The hips are going along for the ride. In other words, if it was hip motion, you would see like the hips move independent of the pelvis. In other words, if I put 200 pounds and I couldn't move it at all, if I tried, I'd say, hey, try to move your hip joints. You, you, you couldn't move the hips. Th this is fixing the hips. You see those little pads there? That's what's fixing the, 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 the legs so that the hips can't do this. So it's going to be one lower extremity block. So the lower extremity is actually free to move in the transverse plane because guess what? That's what the machine is designed to do, allow you to move in the transverse plane. Okay. So even though this illusion may look like the hips are fixed, they're just being used to prevent the hips from rotating, okay? We don't want those hips to rotate. The upper extremity is fixed. So the pelvis isn't going anywhere until the trunk moves it. Another way to look at this exercise if you're still having trouble what muscles am I working in this exercise? If you go to the exercise in the weight room, it's going to say obliques. It's going to say abdominals, trunk muscles, because the motion that we're influencing here is trunk motion. Make sense? Now let's talk about this trunk motion. In this position, I know for a fact, because I could follow the feet, which is following the pelvis, this person is twisted, their trunk is uh, twisted to its left. You have left transverse trunk rotated. So if the person takes the pelvis and goes back home and lines it up, because think about it, if the pelvis and the sternum were lined up, I would see the back of the shoes here. I'd see the back of the soles of the feet. But it's not, it's here. That meant from anatomical, the pelvis had to rotate right transverse. Thus, the trunk had to rotate left transverse. That makes sense? So from anatomical to here, right transverse pelvic, because of left transverse trunk, going back to anatomical, left transverse trunk, because of right transverse pelvic. Cap and bottle. Cap and bottle. Same exact concept, except obviously in this position, you don't have someone kind of keeping the feet fixed, right? So those, those legs can kind of flare out more. And when I say keeping the feet fixed, keeping the feet more centered, less dangled. From anatomical to here, right transverse pelvic, left transverse trunk. Sternum is looking at her left hip. Back to anatomical, left transverse pelvic, right transverse trunk. Right transverse pelvic, left transverse trunk. Come on. Okay. On the test, I could say, what's the position of the trunk? Trunk is right transverse rotated. Never say, what's the position of the pelvis? Well, you can. It's anteriorly tilted posteriorly tilted. Uh, I guess technically you could say it's left transverse rotated, but it would have to be from some perspective, like from perspective of the sternum. If I go back to anatomical, right transverse pelvic because of left transverse trunk. From anatomical, left transverse pelvic because of right transverse trunk. And what if the person did a whole range of motion here, right? Well, the, tr the pelvic girdle rotation would be the same. Right transverse pelvic two, 
right transverse pelvic from the trunk, left transverse trunk to, left transverse trunk from. Cool. All right, so to review, old date, old video, current date, current video, future date, where did you get that video at? Now, let's try this again. For the date of March 8th, 2021, that's today, that's you, that's your class. Comment that you watch this video by saying, got it. And put a period, one little period, after got it. Got it with a period after. That's going to let me know that you watched it and when you watched it. As always, 24-hour office hours, man. If you need some extra help, text me. You can email me. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reply and say, text me. Why? Because emails get buried and emails get spam filtered. But my text messages don't. I get those. And I'm going to try to take care of you as soon as possible, okay? All right, guys. Be well.